afternoon, good afternoon to all of our viewers far and wide. We've got some kudu here, apologies for the fence. We did have them nicely under a shady tree, but they decided they wanted to go and look for these marullas that are on the ground ripening there. So I do apologize for the fence. Had them really lovely and set up under a tree, of course. As usual, last minute they decided, nope, we don't want to stay here. We're going to go and look for some marullas. How's it going, folks? My name is Kerry. Behind me on the camera today, we have Cameron. And thank you for joining us on this nice hot afternoon here on Juma Game Reserve for our sunset safari. It is a nice warm day. So I've been excited to see what we can find today on this afternoon safari. So joining us as well on Juma, on Rusty, we have Cedric and Panda. And from our MC team in Johannesburg, we have on the director's side, we have Gwyn and Loyanda, our D1 and D2. And on the tech side, we have Lorato. And of course here on Juma we have show max it is a really lovely day good for sightings lots of activity fully so our plan for the afternoon is we just came on to this nice open grassland patch close to camp to see what antelope are bobbing around there was some love parlor could we did just see a little stain box so we'll see if we can locate him he took off into the grass so yeah then we plan to head up north to another beautiful open grassland patch uh, we picked up we were on a tracking mission this morning and we did see some zebra tracks with a little baby zebra track with them a little foal so i'm hoping fingers crossed maybe they've gone to one of these open patches so we'll head up north check out this open grassland patch maybe see what's happening at baobab dam and then from there we'll kind of head back down southwest check out some leopard hotspot roads and see what we can find this afternoon oh, aren't these kudu beautiful three lovely lady kudus female kudus so female kudu can and see beautiful anyways um just a reminder folks that this is a live and interactive show we've got a nyala on the left there Cam. there's a nyala in the bush there so just a reminder folks that this is a live and interactive show so please don't forget to join in on the conversation on our twitter feed youtube or sign into the app and register send through those comments we're waiting for your comments and your questions they always keep us on our toes keep things interesting and we all learn as well so yeah be really excited to see what we can find on this lovely sunny sunset safari what is today cam wednesday wacky whisker wednesdays Peace to ya. Definitely we are ready to bumble. Well, I think I'm going to start up now. We'll just do a little bit of a loop around this grassland, open grassland area. We had our little stin box that kind of somewhere in here, literally just had two little bounds and then lay down. He's probably still somewhere here. We've had quite a few little awesome sightings with the Steenbok and they literally lie down on the grass and you cannot see them at all. Sometimes you see an ear twitch here and there and actually it does look a little bit like a hare at some time, so a little bit confusing. But yeah, let's see if we can get our little Steenbok here, if he's still around, see what other antelope are roaming around. We'll keep a lookout for tracks. We're on a mission this afternoon to try and see if we can help Cedric find some rosettes or some whiskers on this wacky whisker wednesday really excited so see what's out there it's a nice hot day so maybe we'll get some elephants also coming for a pool party that would also be fun see some elephants swimming there were some elephants i did see the elephant earlier that was kind of in a mud wallow 
really enjoying himself. He's kind of really getting all that mud onto his skin after the hot day, maybe help protect his skin from the sun. I've definitely got two layers of sun cream on this afternoon. How many layers do you have on cam? Just, just the one. Yep. Have to protect our skin from the sun. See any? There's a little stain, but gone. Crazy how their defense mechanism obviously, firstly, is to hide. And most of the time they go completely undetected. And then if you get a bit close to them, then that's when they'll take off and run. But they such a small little antelope. Normally, as soon as they lie down, it's very hard to detect where they are. Checking on the marilla trees. There were some elephants also around here this morning. I'm not quite sure where they've gone off to, but yeah. I'm sure they're standing under a nice shady tree, or like I said, they're probably having a pool party somewhere at one of our watering holes. What is out there? Come up to the junction. Ah, so I hear that, uh, yeah, on safari there was already some mention of a pool party, so fingers crossed it would be fun. I, I know Cedric loves to ha watch his elephant pool parties. I must say I do love little elephant pool parties. Always quite entertaining. You almost want to get in there, jump in the water and join the elephants for their little pool party, I must say. And the Nice hot day. So let's see what's around. It was lovely to have rain, some rain the other day, but yep, definitely. It's warming up now. Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act. A lot of different areas same as South Africa all your different regions will definitely have different climates obviously the more coastal regions are 
going to also be very hot and humid but yeah obviously Zimbabwe is a landlocked country so and Kruger is also quite far from any coastal region so the climate is quite similar I would say the heat is quite similar the sun also burns yep also hot need to put the sun cream on get the hat and the sun cream sunglasses protect those that skin protect your eyes Well, we're going to head down this road, heading north, and see what's waiting for us. Let's go have a look what's happening with the weather. It's probably going to say it's very, going to be very hot, I, I reckon. Thank you, Kerry. Yes, uh, well, I've got neither. I don't have my sunscreen. I don't really use sunscreen. I use more like that devil's thorn, and uh, I don't have my sunglasses here. So, but it's all right. We've got some impala, and we've got a beautiful male wildebeest, and there's a baboon, a chakma baboon, just where the wildebeest is, in front of the wildebeest. Like, uh, it's in the grass now. It's gonna come through here somewhere but I can't see there maybe now uh, it's somewhere around here but it's beautiful here at uh, Juma Private Game Reserve and I'm looking forward to this afternoon's uh, drive good afternoon everybody my name is Cedric and behind the camera with me on Rusty we've got a panda and oh I am definitely looking forward to this afternoon And we've got those beautiful herd of impala, as I say, we've got that wildebeest, we've got some baboons, chuck my baboons, but you can't see them now, the grass is so high that they're walking there where the impalas are, but uh, you just can't see them at all. All a lot of different species together, all helping out, helping one another out here, so if, in case if there's any predators around, <clears throat> the one will help the other one and to start alarm calling and then they know that there is some a danger in the area but for now they're very relaxed oh you can actually see some of the baboons there now nice to see some chakma baboons look at that look at that that is so nice oh it's a little one that uh, holding at the bottom eh? yeah a little baby holding on the belly of mom don't go that way Beautiful, yes, it's very lush yeah, at the gym at the moment. Very, very lush. Beautiful, very thick. Good for the animals. A lot of food around, still quite a bit of water. But yeah, for sure, this summer there's been not as much rain as we had last year and the year before. Definitely not close to what we had. The other years. So, plan of action from this side, from Gary Dam. I'm going to slowly start heading towards Buffelswick Dam. I'm going to go take a look around there. We'll do a little bit of dam hopping. I think that is in order for the afternoon in this heat. I think, as you can see, even these impalas and that they are just looking for some shade. Some of them, even the wildebeest, is looking for the shade close to the water in case they do need to have a bit of a drink for the afternoon and they don't want to travel too far in this heat and we might bump into some elephants apparently there was a male elephant that was here at the dam not too long ago but it looks like he has moved on Just listening to some of the bird calls here, of course the woodland kingfisher. Sounds like we've got some starlings calling in the distance. Well, I think we saw Niala now, didn't we? I think the Niala's already gone past, eh, Panda? Somewhere... Ah, 
Oh, there, there goes the niala now. You can see the niala going through there. You've got that beautiful white stripes on the niala. Almost looks like the impala, uh, the female impalas, but uh, it's the niala. It's got almost the same coloration. A little bit of a golden color with those beautiful white stripes coming down the sides. And it's also feeling very safe amongst uh, the herd here. And it's not just one, usually in the islands will travel in family groups. Completely, uh, I can say, different social structures. A harem like this of impalas has all different genes, like quite a mixture. But when it comes to Niyala, one of the white stripes, you'll find they have like all the sisters and aunts and grannies together, so the genetics are the same. All right, puns, let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. As I say, there's a saying, the sun is pulling water. Sally, why don't we ever see them in the water? Because they're not swimmers, says Sally. They don't like to swim. Unless it's a wild dog that's busy chasing one, then it's a different story. But other than that, they're not, uh, they're not big swimmers at all. They don't like to swim. I mean, I've seen... Hmm? No, they're not like me. Oh, no, I can paddle. I can swim. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm quite the paddler. But um, I've seen impalas even with the wild dogs going back and forth like three times across the dam, and you can see they start going under because they're getting tired. They're not built for, for paddling through water at all, at all. And funny enough, the one was there at Biffleshook Dam. We got to see. Uh, a sighting like that many years ago, in, I think it was 2016, 2015. A pack of wild dogs chased an impala into the dam, and a poor impala went from one side, and the dogs went to the other side, it went back that way, back and forth. It was like three, four times, and eventually she started, her head was going underwater, she was getting tired. To the edge of the, of the dam, of the water, and then the, impala, the wild dogs just grabbed and pulled her out and killed her. So. She tried, but just not built for it. I think it's like if we put on high hills and if we try and paddle through the sea with high hills, oh, a lot of baboons are running here. Okay, now they went to disappear into the thicket. Oh, there's still one here. Yeah, he's just looking at us. Yeah, they come, I think they come across now. He's just ducked under. Oh, there he goes across, sneaking across. I wonder how Kerry's, where's Kerry off to? <coughs> Maybe Kerry's gone on to the western side. All right, let's uh, move on, uh, Panda. We're gonna leave them. The baboons don't want to hang around for us. Catherine, Wild Dog Wednesday. Yeah, they went into unfortunately for half months the wild dogs, but I'm looking for West Whisker Cat Whisker Wednesday. But yes, Catherine, I'm sure Kerry's been very lucky with wild dogs. Maybe she, maybe she's lucky with the wild dogs as often. You never know. Audio. Losing my audio again. Yeah. No, thank you. How's that? Oh, alright, I'll have to sort this up. Do you apologize? It sounds like my. Fine now? Good. Alrighty, thank you, Panda. Looks like it's right now. All right, so we might lose signal here. Yeah? So, fortunately, if we do, I will apologize ahead of time.
Wild Earth Travel, in association with Wandering Through, is offering some exclusive privately guided safaris in 2024. James is taking a trip into the famed woodlands of the mysterious White Lion, Ngala Private Game Reserve, in July. Steve and Cedric will lead a safari to Chitwa Chitwa in November. To book, email travel at wildearth.tv or go to the website for more information. We are looking forward to seeing you on safari. And who knows, maybe she's spotted a youngster that she thinks she can single out. It seems like she may have. Look at these shots. Fascinating. Well done, Manu. Who are you going after? What have you found? It's a young Topi. She's got it. Can you believe it? Here come the adults coming back from the right. They've stopped, let's stay on her, because maybe even these zebra will have a go at her. Can you believe it? Uh, sorry folks, we do apologize for our signal breakup. Just went into a slightly bad signal spot. Uh, we managed to track down our warthog and uh, thought we'd watch them for a little bit. So I think there's two females here and four little piglets. So those female warthogs can weigh anything from about 40 to 60, maybe 65 kilograms. See she's got little tusks there. Not nearly as big as the male's tusks. Uh, just talking about the warthogs and these females generally always have smaller tusks than the males or some males tusks are male warthogs tusks are pretty impressive I must admit they kind of look like they've got a little spirally moustache coming around the sides of their face this warthog has very small tusks the gestation period for a warthog is about five to six months and again they give birth during our summer season so when we get our rains I love it when the little piglets are all born these little tiny little baby piglets all over the place but again they are preyed upon by many a species everything oh there's an elephant in the background there um, I don't know you're not really not gonna get him it's pretty far and he's in the bushes 
looks like he was pretty covered in mud, probably heading down to Baobab Dam for a bit of a mud wallow or swim. I was just saying little baby warthogs unfortunately are preyed on by many species, lion, leopard, anything that can catch a little baby warthog definitely will. So not all of them will survive the season. I mean, if a female warthog has anything between five to seven little baby warthogs, they'll be lucky if two or three of them survive the season. So these two females, the piglets are probably from both of them. So maybe only two of each female warthog actually survived. They're really enjoying the grass here at the moment. So Brandon, it's actually warthogs, <laughs> how they stay cool in the heat is they also like to find a little mud wallow, go down to a mud wallow and roll around in the mud and that's the perfect way that they like to cool down in the heat. Also sometimes where their burrows are located might be quite nice and cool underneath a jackalberry tree or in a mound of some sort and uh, it's a perfect place for them to go and rest up in a day but yeah nothing more entertaining than watching some warthogs having a good mud wallow. We're gonna lose them soon. See the tree just in between us and the warthogs is moving a bit. There's a bit of wind that's picked up. All right, yeah, I think we're gonna move on, leave these warthogs to find a nice shady spot. It's a bit quiet up here, so let's carry on, see what else we can find out there. Now the elephant that I saw, he was kind of just in the distance there, unfortunately. He looked very, very dark, like he'd come from a mud wallow as well. Buffalo also love mud wallowing cover that skin of theirs in some nice cool mud and just lie there for the whole afternoon. Often you'll find buffalo bulls that's where they'll spend their afternoons that are hot like this as in a nice muddy patch just lying there. Same as warthogs you can also lie in a mud wallow for quite, a, quite some time. Yeah we're just we're just talking about mud wallows this little looks like a little puddle in the road that could if it had a bit more water that could have been a perfect little mud wallow patch for warthogs sam fingers crossed let's see what action we can get today so there's a little kind of depression in the road that might have collected a little bit of water and i'm sure the warthogs would have at some stage some stage when there was a bit more water in this little puddle I'm sure a few water would love to come and roll in this puddle and that's kind of how pans are started as well there's maybe a small depression that collects a little bit of water and then maybe some warthogs go and wallow in there and make it bigger and bigger and then eventually maybe a buffalo and then elephant also spend some time in there opening it up trying to get out that nice mud to cover their body with and then uh, yeah eventually this is how pans can be formed. Just looking at the pan there, little mud wallow. Sorry, I didn't catch that last comms cam. Kids drive. All right, good afternoon, kids. We are going to head...
Welcome to all the kids on the kids' drive this afternoon, and what a way to start with a grey heron that is now walking behind a tree, the only tree that's in front of us. Can you believe it? Murphy's Law. But I'm looking forward to this afternoon's uh, kids' drive here at the uh, Juma Private Game Reserve. Good afternoon to all the kids. My name is Cedric. I'm the naturalist here on uh, Rusty, and my cameraman is the amazing, amazing panda. So thanks for joining us. Yes, and uh, we are at the dam at the moment. We've got a hippopotamus maybe we can see. Because unfortunately it looks like the grey heron has decided to go behind a tree. But we've got a nice hippopotamus here at this beautiful dam this afternoon. It's very, very hot this afternoon. And uh, so we are doing a little bit of dam hopping. In other words, we're going to move from one dam to the next dam. And also joining us this afternoon on our... Ooh. I just caught a fish. Oh. Sorry, I'm just going to quickly turn. Sorry, Panda. Sorry. Let's just quickly hold. We can do the sun a little bit, huh? Uh, uh, look there. That grey heron just caught a fish. There, he just caught a fish. Caught a tilapia. Look at that, everybody. It just caught a beautiful fish. Oh, wow. And what a stunning size fish it's got. Then might dip it into the water a bit and stab it with its long beak. You can see he's trying to shake it a little bit. So sometimes what they'll do, they'll try and stab it and then clean it off again. But yeah, joining us on our drive this afternoon on Wendy, we've got Kerry and Cameron. Please send any comments or questions through. We are waiting to answer as many as possible. But look at this. Wow. What a start. So this bird catches fish or frogs. Oh, head first. Maybe it's going to swallow it whole. Let's see. Oh, there it goes. Oh, look at it. It's gone. It's, 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 did you see the fish actually like kind of uh, flapping around there in the neck? <laughs> It does look a little bit on the tired side, doesn't it? His eyes look very, very exhausted. Oh my goodness. Oxpack, you're almost the size of that in Bala's head. Be gentle. Just be slow. Still learning. Here we go. Getting another spot that the Impala can't often reach, right near where the horns is just starting to push out. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, it's a little one. It's a juvenile. And it's also joining the party, waiting for somebody to feed it. Yes, flappy feathers. Oh, shame. <laughs> I can't get rid of them. <laughs> Look at this, like they're having an argument. No, you leave me alone. I said, don't go there. Shame, little one. You might have to buck and rear to be able to get those birds off. Holding on nice and tight to your flappy fur. that thing doesn't slip. Oh my girl, you go. Come on girl. Come on girl. You're doing so well. Come on girl, you're doing so well. There she goes again. No, no, no. Oh my god. Oh god, oh god. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. She's holding on. Oh. <laughs> like a cat, she made it on all fours. <laughs> A very very good morning and welcome to a special broadcast. I have got this big lion trying to approach a group of hyenas who are feeding at the moment. I am Sydney Fumurani Mikosi. I am live from the western side of the Greater Kruger National Park, Sabi Sand. Look at that lion, he's trying to come now. He's running very fast to come and disperse the hyenas at the moment. Look at that. The lion is now the lion is the lion is trying to fight. He's biting the hyena at the moment. This is so sad. Look at that. 
The, the lion is catching the hyena. This is so sad. That hyena is badly injured. Look at that. Now the lion is coming back to uh, the, the kill which was eaten by the hyenas. Not too sure. Maybe these hyenas got this kill from the lions. I am not sure what happened here, but that was something else. The lion came running aggressively and started to attack the hyenas right by their territory. <laughs> Poo! Yay! Best ever chew toy. The lion cubs do lose their little milk teeth like other animals and it's something that we've seen more with leopard cubs than we have with lion cubs. We haven't really focused in on the, the process of their teeth and the way that they grow, but it happens sort of around about, I'm guessing with lion cubs, around about six to eight months, maybe eight months would be more realistic, where they start to grow their permanent teeth and the, their little milk teeth pop out. And that is elephant dung. And elephant dung is fun. Bored with tails now, elephant dung is the next thing. Wow. Yes, does that taste nice? Blah, 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 blah. Flame. Tis the season of love and couples that win together, stay together. Grab your partner and join us for an interactive quiz this Valentine's Day. To be a part of the romance, go to our website and register in teams of two. Name your team after your favorite rom-com or the rom-com couple that represents your relationship. Fall in love with nature this Valentine's Day with Wild Earth. live large in humanity's imagination. Across the continent, fascinating mammals have evolved to fill every conceivable niche.
their struggles for survival, natural and anthropogenic, mirror those of wildlife the world over. Because they are so beguiling, Africa's mammals have become ambassadors for the Earth's remaining wilderness. Oh, we do apologize for losing our signal there. I think we just have, you know, we are in the bush. We're in the middle of the bush here. Yeah? And uh, unfortunately, sometimes those things uh, do happen. But uh, yes, welcome back. Back with the kids show. And we're still here at, uh, at uh, Biffelzook Dam at the moment. And uh, just taking... Just looking at uh, the hippopotamus and then we've got some nice Egyptian geese here that's actually situated on the bank. Let's go take a little gosling. So this uh, family or this pair, this mom and dad Egyptian geese, they've got three little youngsters. You see, look, you can see two of them. Where's the third one? It's, where's the rebel? Where's the third one? I think it's just behind. Yeah, it's just behind uh, mom there. And what's nice about that, that, well, you know, they just stick so close to mom and dad nowadays. And as well as that mom and dad, the male and the female Egyptian geese, they're very, very protective over the youngsters. So if anything comes close by, you'll find that the parents will quickly show their aggression towards that animal if it comes too close and uh, to protect their little, little ones. But they started off with five and then two disappeared. They just went like... Gone. They just disappeared. They were just vanished. No idea. But you must remember, there's a lot of predators around here, so they have to be very observant, otherwise vigilant. Otherwise, they need to look around and make sure that they're always safe. So, when you're coming to predators, you're looking at sort of like cats, like little servals, caracals, leopards, and then you've got other things like your birds of prey, so big eagles. So like big eagles, like your African hawk eagle. Mm. But for now, it looks like the adults are just preening themselves, just making sure that their feathers are nicely...
fancy playing Safari Snaps? Or showing off your photo skills in fun competitions? How about sneak peeks of our brand new camera spots and live chats with fellow AfriCam fans? Well, AfriCam All Access has got your back. Just head to AfriCam's YouTube channel, hit the join button and select AfriCam All Access. You'll unlock AfriCam premium website perks and all the VIP benefits of our YouTube memberships.
Welcome back kids. I'm very sorry for the uh, technical difficulties we've been having. Uh, we've just had a little bit of trouble signal here but we hope you enjoyed watching the animals on the dam cam and uh, yeah we're back on safari now and we're gonna see what we can find what animals are out there. We saw some big elephants while we were away. One big bull he was in must smelt very very bad Oof, cam and i were cam got a bit of a fright eh? you got a bit of a fright you were so big so we had two big bulls as we came around a corner i think they were coming from a nice mud wallow somewhere and uh one big bull was a bit further away we didn't see him but this other bull was massive he had very very long tusks he was covered in mud it looked like he just had a nice mud bath and uh yeah he was he was definitely in a must there, he had a very bad smell. Oh, we're just coming onto the main road here. See if we can find anything on this road. We're looking for some tracks of any animals. So Gaba, six years old, so at the moment there's a lot of fruit called marula fruit that the elephants are feeding on. They really love these fruit, they're very juicy, they're about this big and green. Actually, we can have a look if we can see any of the fruit on the tree. Oh, there's a tree here, maybe we can zoom in on some of those fruit. I'll go back for you, Cam. So we've, we found a marula tree here, so we can show you the fruit that this gap here. So this is a marula tree and these are the trees that the elephants are following at the moment. They're feeding on the fruit of the marula tree but they'll also feed on the bark and the leaves. So have a look there, you can see some green fruit on this marula tree. And these are like candy for elephants at the moment. They're really loving these fruit. So every day the elephants, wherever they move, they are focusing on these delicious marula fruits they're full of liquid and moisture inside it's almost like biting into a lychee it's got lots of water and these elephants are going crazy for these marula fruit at the moment sometimes they'll even use their head and push over the tree of the marulas to get the fruit down and also to feed on the leaves and the branches there that you can see so we actually have to protect these trees so the elephants don't destroy them so the base of this tree there's actually some wire that they've put around the tree some diamond mesh wire so that the elephants can't put their tusks in the tree and remove all the bark you can see there it's just trying to protect the tree from the elephants because they love eating the bark of these marilla trees as well so that's one of the things the elephants are feeding on a lot at the moment but otherwise they are browsers so they'll also eat kind of other different types of trees there's some terminalias around here that they really like they're eating lots of grass at the moment because we have a lot of green grass so Amelia six years old so an elephant can live anything from about 40 to 60 years old now, there's some recorded old old elephants it's difficult obviously to tell the age of an elephant but sometimes you can age them depending on their teeth because they only have a certain amount of sets of teeth once those teeth all run out then they no longer can eat properly and then Fortunately, they have to start eating softer food and eventually if they don't have any other illnesses then they might die from kind of having not being able to chew with those teeth. So anything from about 40 to 60, maybe some individuals that are very old, maybe 65 years old. All right, let's we're going to carry on making our way. Thank you for the questions, kids. Keep sending the questions through. So yeah, there's a lot of other fruiting species of trees that elephants also like to feed on. So when they do fruit, elephants will like to eat fruit. Some places in Africa, uh, in South Africa and Zimbabwe, Botswana, Zambia, the elephants will actually also come into people's gardens and they also love to eat the same fruit that we eat. I know that elephants love to eat pawpaws as well, papayas. They really love oranges though and lemons. Whew. Elephants will go crazy for oranges and lemons.
but yeah well, otherwise when they're in the bush here then they will feed on a lot of different types of trees and bark branches grass any wild fruit they can get as well they've got a very strong trunk so they use that trunk to pull off the leaves even off trees that have lots and lots of thorns and they their stomachs are very hard so they can digest a lot of very difficult food that other animals would never be able to eat. So yeah, they have quite a varied diet, the elephants. I hope that we will find some elephants having a pool party today because it is a very hot day today. We did already see those bulls that we saw, they look like they're in the mud. So I'm trying to get to one of our dams right now or a watering hole where hopefully we can find some elephants having a good time, having a swim, playing in the mud. They always have a lot of fun. Elephants in the water. Even the adults, not just the babies, the adults will also be swimming, having a good time, playing with each other. Sorry, we've got a vehicle coming here, folks. How's it going? Good, good. Sorry, Kerry. Nice to meet you. Um, apparently there was a herd of buffalo at uh, Erethusa airstrip this morning. Yeah. And uh, possibly two black dams with them, so if you guys are allowed to go there then. Good luck. All the best. No worries. Have a good safari, folks. Sorry kids, we just had another game drive vehicle that uh, they're also out on safari just like us this afternoon. So while we go look for our elephants, let's go across to Cedric and see what he's found for you. Thank you, Kerry. Yes, I've just made my way to down one of these roads now and we just bumped into a beautiful tree now. Um, this tree is stunning. One of our protected species around here, we try not to drive over them because those are slow growing and plus they are very soft and fragile. And this is known as a apple leaf. Apple leaf. Why do they call it an apple leaf? Well, if I take a dead leaf here, it's going to sound like I'm biting into an apple. Mm. So it sounds like a biting into an apple, so it's known as an apple leaf, got the sound of it. Now also very palatable to insects, uh, a lot of the insects, the caterpillar, caterpillars and all that, they love feeding on the apple leaf. You can see many of the tree, uh, the leaves itself has got like little kind of, uh, like, almost like bite marks where it's been eaten by the uh, caterpillars. And uh, so yes, this is a very palatable tree. Now, with this tree, what's nice about this is that if you are lost in the bush somewhere and there's a nice river or there's a dam or something and you need to cross the dam or you need to float down the river and you need a boat, it's the nicest thing is to take a big branch from the apple leaf, like the trunk or a nice uh, piece, a nice thick piece, because it's very buoyant because it floats very easy <clears throat> because it's so light and all that you can grab it and you can actually put it in the water hold on to it like a lilo and then float down the river with this and it'll keep you afloat otherwise you won't sink with this piece of wood very very nice for pretty much your uh, survival ways as well as uh, the people making uh, makoros so makoro is a like a canoe it's a kind of a boat, that's a wooden boat that's hollowed out on the inside. So you can actually make makoros from this. So if sometimes these trees get very nice and thick. And if you've got a nice big one like this and you've got a lot of time on your hands, you can actually empty or you can actually scoop the insides of the tree out and you can make a nice little boat because it's very, very, very soft. That's why it's a beautiful tree, the apple leaf. Yes, I love them. I love them to bits. Mm, it's very hot. Brian, we try we try to know all the tree names. We're not always that great or good. Well, I try, I try. I mean, it's I know quite a few of them in this area, but if you look in the entire southern Africa, oh, Brian, 
I think it's so many trees, I can only get a small percentage right. But luckily I've been in this area for a very long time, so for me it's a little bit easier to identify trees very quickly. Um, but there's still some that I don't know, so mm, I'll still want to try and find some of those trees that I don't know, and I'm trying to follow up on the names. Alright, let's uh, go on, let's go on. Oh, sorry I just got tangled up here with my, with my radio. All right, let's go. Mm, it's very hot. Sitting in the standing in the sun there now was uh, interesting. It's a lovely afternoon. Lovely, lovely afternoon. I like I like getting hot in ways, in certain ways. <clears throat> but I like the animal activity in the heat. So as I say, you go to the dams, all the water holes, and mud wallows. You can find maybe some elephants mud wallowing or swimming. Very possible. I just heard teet. Don't know if Gwen was trying to get a hold of us there. Now a director. I just heard teet. So now we look very carefully. Do you hear anything? I don't hear anything. Well, I don't hear anything. Sorry, Gwen. Nothing's coming through. Harriet, seven years old. Snakes. Woo! And it's this time of the this like with this heat. Oh, black mamba. <clears throat> There's cobras. Such so a snouted cobra. Your um, Mozambique spitting cobra, then your adders, like your puff adders, your night adders, your berg adders, and uh, oh, there's other, a lot of other snakes. Rhombic egg eaters. Oh, there's so many snakes. I don't even know how many species of snakes we do have here. Yeah. A lot of species aside, especially in this kind of heat now. In this area, with this kind of heat, I'm always looking for maybe black mambas or uh, outed cobras. Actually, they'll lie on the road and start like sun tanning, walk up their bodies, so they'll actually lie. All right, it looks like we're just going to stop here and look out for any other bird species that might be this side. Maybe a snake that's hanging from a tree. You never know. It's always nice to kind of listen out. We are bringing you a new and improved fan favorite. We have unearthed the finest gems from over the years in our archives to give you hours of amazing entertainment. Hop on the largest safari vehicle in the world and revisit the best of Wild Earth with epic moments from eco-training pride lands, memories from Madikwe, and more. Reconnect with your favorite naturalists and animal characters with the best of safari life. Wild Earth, connecting with nature.
This duck is really enjoying himself in the water. I must say I am pretty jealous. I wish I could also go and jump in the water here with this duck. And so David, the difference between the male and female, their body colours are pretty much exactly the same. Except the female, she was here this morning, she doesn't, her comb on the end of her bill is not as big as this male. So the male has quite a big comb on the end of his bill. But the female doesn't have any comb. It's a small little kind of lump on the end of her bill. I'll try and see if I can find a photo for you, David. Well, I mean, I've got my bird book here. But yeah, he's definitely got a huge comb there. Isn't that cool? Look how he's got some speckledy spots underneath his throat there. I wonder if he's not lonely here by himself. Why doesn't he go and find his female friend? Maybe she's on one of the other dams on the reserve. I haven't seen her today on anywhere else. Every cell that makes up the wonders of our natural history needs this life-sustaining molecule. Sometimes in tiny amounts, Sometimes in torrents. Our blue planet, flush with biological wonders, would be a desolate, lifeless place without miraculous H2O. We're still sitting here with our knob billed duck bird of prey calling on the right, just trying to figure out what he is. Could have been like a little sparrow hawk or something. I'm trying to find a picture for you of the knob-billed duck female. Okay, I've got a photo here, Cam. So I'm gonna just put it on the... Let me just give my phone a wipe here. We'll make sure it's nice and clean. So there we go. This is a juvenile. Oh, is that okay there, Cam? Oh. So this is a juvenile. See, it doesn't have a comb at all on its front of its bill there. I'm just going to scroll. You can see, again, another juvenile. So a very small comb, but you can see the male. Look at that big knob on the front of his bill. So when they're adults, obviously this male we're looking at is still young, because when they're adults, you can see how they have much more gray on the belly and a lot of brown on the chest in the front there. So you can see the difference between this male big comb on the front of his, on the top of his bill, whereas a female doesn't really have much of a comb at all. She has a little comb, but not, not too. Okay, copied. We're also having a bit of trouble with signal. Do you want us to check in the eastern side as well? If you want to go that side, go for it. I can't. Uh, it doesn't, nothing's working that side. Okay, copied. We're also having a bit of trouble with signal as well. Sorry, kids. I was just chatting to Cedric on the radio. Um, trying to see where he can search, what we can look for. So just want to apologize for the breakup in our picture. There's a lot of places here where the signal's pretty, pretty bad. 
Look at this guy cleaning himself there. Oh, we've got some starlings flying over. Some... All right. Yeah. Strange bird of prey calling in the distance. Could be a gaber goshawk or a little sparrowhawk of some sort. Maybe during our drive we might find the female comb duck at one of the other watering holes. Let's see. So we're gonna drive around here and see what we can find around this watering hole. In the meantime, let's head over to Cedric and see what Cedric is up to. Thanks, uh, Kerry. Uh, I went to the eastern boundary and all that. Um, I don't know. Just not getting any signal from Rusty side that side, so. Uh, I'm going to head slowly back uh, to the west, see what we can find there. Maybe get that herd of buffalo that's going to be coming over. I'm hoping so. Because uh, yeah, this uh, we do a little bit better that side. So, yeah, let's go. I'm going west and see. As I say, west is best. West is best. Yep. West is best. Uh, so at least a little bit of a breeze coming through now this afternoon. I feel a bit How can I say cooling down? Slightly, slightly. But it is cooling down for the afternoon compared to what it was a little bit earlier. Alright, let's go slowly in this direction. And look here. It's usually we used to find a squirrel here that uh, lost all its fur. Almost had a thing called mange. And uh, it used to live in this tree ahead of us here. A little tree squirrel, beautiful little tree squirrel. But it lost all its fur and it looked very, looked really funny. Didn't have that fluffy tail. And look around here, yeah, I don't see anything. But yeah, we've got some nice little red bush willow. So you've yeah, got a lovely little pod here. A lovely tree with a pod. So what happens here is, uh, let me quickly connect my little radio there. So you see all these nice little pods of the bush willow. So I always say in the bush, oh, we've got a little ladybug. You think we can get a ladybug onto your screen, Panda? Sorry, little ladybug. I do a pod. Oh, don't, don't climb onto my finger now. Okay, don't worry. We'll get this little ladybug off. Come on. Here's your little pod. There we go. <laughs> it's hiding now. You got it there, Fanner. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah. A oh, little lady. I'm not too sure what type, but it's beautiful little. There you go. There it goes. It's running. Shame. Let me guys go put him back onto the tree. Come. Jump onto my finger. Come. Come on. Don't know what ladybug it is, but it's very cute. A nice little orange. All right. I am struggling to get this. There we go. All right. I just want, I like to always return them back to their little, little spots. All right. You can sit there with it. Okay. There we go. I am struggling with this little ladybug. Doesn't want to leave me alone. Ah, oh, there it is. Yay, it's off. Okay, let me grab another little pod. One without a ladybug on it. So yes, if you want to make a nice bush willow tea, we can grab these little pods. I'm going to just put a little pod there. Now there is a little bit of a toxic seed that's inside, in the middle there. And uh, you know, if you're going to make tea from that, you must make sure that you do remove the seed. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick it up. And what you do, you grab one wing there, one wing there, and then you open it up. All right, it's very fresh, so that's not working, this one. Sorry, Panda, just uh, bear with me here. Yeah? Let's try again. Let's try another one. Yeah, I see they're still very fresh because it's still this time of the year. Wait, you've got to wait for them to dry up a bit. 
<laughs> the thing's just breaking up. All right, dry gate. Yeah. All right, anyway, so what happens when they dry, you can actually grab it and you can open the pod and there'll be the seed inside. I don't know why I can't get open this. It's still very wet, so it's still very fresh. And then you take the pod, the rest of it, and you throw it into boiling water and then you make a nice tea from it, like a nice bush wallow tea. We call it a bush wallow tea. So very, very nice. And I've done it once or twice. All right, let's just take it off. And it's typical with this kind of uh, species, the combretum. So like the leadwood, bush willows, uh, all four-wing four pods, and they're part of the combretum family. Oh, it's very hot. This is On Safari. In this particular case, it looks like he's made a coalition with his sons. I'm sure this afternoon is going to be a fantastic drive, as always. Now remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you. Thank you.
All right, uh, yeah, it looks like we waiting to go down. I'm gonna go slowly that side. I know that we've been on dam cam. It looks like unfortunately a few signal area uh, situations at the moment, but we are working hard on it to sort that out and make it as smooth as possible. All right, I'm gonna go through Giraffe Crossing. This is like a last little crossing before Gary Dam. Um, sometimes there's a breaking up in the picture, very slight. So I don't think it'll be serious. If it is, I do apologize in, in advance. In advance. Take a look around this side. We, I wonder if those Wahlberg eagles, I wonder if they've moved on. Oh, there's one there. Oof, I don't know, the sun's gonna be bad, eh? Find out, but let's try. Let's try. We're just gonna get the silhouette of it. Fortunately, it's not. Oof. Oh, rusty brakes sounded great there. But there's a nice Warburg Eagle just up right on top of the of the dead tree. Looks like the the dark morph. So there's that pale morph and the dark morph that usually comes to the site every single year to the same nesting site. The other day we saw one with a squirrel here from Gary Dam. It actually caught a squirrel, a tree squirrel. But you can even see the bird is getting hot. You can when it's when you see the beak now, it's open. So just to regulate, there you go. Regulate the temperature, the body temperature. Oh, I even heard, I heard a, a bearded woodpecker there. Huh? Did you hear that? They're so small, I doubt we'll even find it on this tree, but we'll try. All right, so while we're busy sorting uh, some stuff on our uh, signal and the tech side of things, let's have it over to Okukuyu to see what's happening at that waterhole.
Tis the season of love and couples that win together, stay together. Grab your partner and join us for an interactive quiz this Valentine's Day. To be a part of the romance, go to our website and register in teams of two. Name your team after your favorite rom-com or the rom-com couple that represents your relationship. Fall in love with nature this Valentine's Day with Wild Earth. Welcome back. We do apologize for all of our any technical difficulties we've been having today. Signal has not been our friend, but we are back here. We are about to head through a bad signal spots. We thought we'd just stay stationary here and see what we can find. So I've got a little terminalia or silver cluster leaf, little branch here. I just wanted to show you. You can see the crazy little silver cluster leaves and you can see why it's called a cluster leaf. They've got kind of like an alternate leaf structure. We're also talking about uh, the seeds this morning. So you can see they've got one winged pod, these silver cluster leaf here. See the winged pod over there. Beautiful colour. It's quite a nice variation in the bush at the moment. You've got the silver cluster leaves and then you have these horse we were talking seed distribution this morning and how different plants have adapted their seed pods to be able to distribute it in different ways. So some have wings, which maybe help them to take them, blow them away. Some have uh, maybe fluff on them that helps to blow them uh, kind of with the wind. Some have seeds that are consumed in a fruit. Animals for eat. Animals eat. Right, so while we had this here, um, elephants have also feed on the silver cluster leaf at times. It's got many medicinal uses, but I thought quite a cool thing we could show you while we've stopped here with the silver cluster leaf is it's actually very good for making rope. So if you want to make rope with the silver cluster leaf, you kind of just take out, kind of you want the inner fiber of the cluster leaf. So I've actually, you can see this is, I've stripped the straight off of the the tree here but I've already got two pieces that are kind of already prepped and ready for rolling so I picked these a little bit of a while ago so they've gone a little bit hard so I'm gonna just give them a little bit of moisture there and uh, can you see my legs here Cam? All right, so yeah, very good for making rope. A lot of trees are great for making ropes. So basically what you do is you get your two strands kind of 
make sure that it's nice and wet obviously if you've just done this it will be wet but I picked it a bit of a while ago and then you take your side of your leg there and you kind of roll it on your leg here and it's very good for making rope very a lot of tree species around here that are very great for making rope another one of them is the uh, uh, knob uh, sorry the buffalo thorn you kind of just twist it, twist it, twist it. This piece is being a bit difficult because it's still a little bit dry now. So yeah, it's a lengthy process. You can spend quite some time twisting this piece. There we go. We're getting a bit of a nice curl on that. I've made quite a few of these bracelets before. Mopani, I don't know if any of you are in the areas that you have Mopani, is also very good for making this rope. If you have hairs on your legs though, then good luck gentlemen. You might end up getting waxed in the end here. And yeah, you basically do this for quite a while. And if you see there, we have a nice twisted piece of rope. So yeah, I mean, you can carry on twisting it for a while. So then what you do with this piece of rope is then you then tie it up somewhere and just kind of leave it to set and overnight by tomorrow it will kind of be set and have a nice kind of tight twist on there and then you can use that for rope. Some people actually join this together with other strands and turn that into rope. So in the forest in the Congo uh, a lot of people will use this rope. Um, obviously some ladies will sit there and spend days on end actually making making rope like this. They use it in the villages. So I'm going to kind of keep this piece. I think I'll so what you do is just want to keep it nice and taut there. So, whoop. so we're just going to tie it up and then tomorrow it's going to be quite nice strong there. So yeah, so that's just a little piece. Obviously the more you get, so yeah, people end up joining them together. So here we go. So basically so Viv, yeah, that is pretty cool, learning how to make rope from the inner fiber of some trees. So again, it needs to have quite a good twist on it. So you, yeah, like I said, if you have hair on your leg, be prepared to have a bald patch because it is going to definitely chafe the hair off of your leg. And uh, yeah, so some people will still use this as a mean of means of making rope. Or again, if you're ever stranded in the middle of the bush, you need to make rope to, I don't know, maybe catch something or yeah, carry things, carry wood. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely a great way to make some rope here. I'm gonna leave it. And I mean, even these pieces, if you wanna take these pieces and if they do, see they kind of start getting a bit hard. Again, you must know if the, the kind of, the type of tree that it is, that it is safe. You just either dunk it in water or like I know the silver cluster leaf is pretty safe, so. Just kind of give it a little bit of moisture and again take it on your leg and give it a nice twist. Sometimes you have to spend quite a lot of time. Forest monarch, yes, this is definitely a good skill to have, learning how to make rope in the bush. There we go. I don't know if you can get that cam. Okay. So see it needs to be a very nice tight twist and you have got your rope. Very cool. All right. Again, if you stranded in the wilderness, this can be again last minute, last resort also for if you need to catch any fish or anything like that. Obviously it's not the most ideal thing to use, but uh, yeah, can be a pretty useful tool to know. All right, so we've done our rope making session. Let's head over to Cedric and see how Cedric is doing. And what's happening with Cedric? Nice, Kerry. I wonder if I still got my rope that I made the other day. I actually made a nice one. Well, it wasn't bad. It was all right. I thought it was quite good. Well, I can't remember what I did. Oh, my God. the monkeys are going. Oh, my mic. Okay, I do apologize. Looks like the mic quickly, just audio. 
better than Panda? Yeah, Is it good? All right, so part of the lies about my audio. I thought you said monkeys are busy alarm calling. I'm like, what? Um, but yeah, I've made rope before and uh, I don't know what I did with it. I think I, I lost it somewhere. Or well, put it somewhere and I lost it in, in the bush somewhere close to camp. I actually want to go and take a look at it. But I doubt it. I think by now it's all brittle and uh, maybe even been pushed down due to the rain, maybe washed away. Oof, let's do it. Let's do a little bit of sunscreen for me. I think I need it after today. So I usually use a certain uh, creeper. <laughs> well, it's actually funny enough, I was singing a song now. <laughs> Jeepers Creepers. <laughs> Jeepers Creepers, what's with those peepers? Anyway, all right, so we've got a, a devil's thorn. Oh, but we don't have the flower here. I don't see if there's a flower anyway for the devil's thorn. All right, as you can see, the devil's thorn here, very much a creeper. And I don't like using really um, the sunscreen. So what I do a lot of times, I'll actually take this if I need some moisturizer or sunscreen or just to keep my skin nice and cool. I'll use a lot of these leaves. And if you take a whole lot of these leaves off, I'm just going to grab a few of these leaves. Thank you very much, uh, creeper. Have you, got, have you got water with you there, Pams? No, no, no. I, don't I don't want to use coffee. I want to see if I can just quickly get... All right, let me just quickly put a little bit of water in here. All right, there we go. I've got some water this side. There we go. And, then, and you mix it up quite a bit with this, and it makes it a bit of a goo. Not the greatest of goo this afternoon, but yeah. And then you can spread the gel all over your skin and keep it nice and wet and moisturized as well as the sun all right let's take a look nothing else here yeah? all right i thought i was going to find the thorn there all right let's continue let's continue get my radio out from this side Okay. Nice. Oh, now it feels so cool with that gel on the skin um, from the devil's thorn. It feels so, so fresh. Love it. It's still got combs, eh? I haven't heard anything yet. I haven't heard anything. <laughs> Tell me sometimes you can use something like uh, maybe a magic guari, another bush just to as a toothbrush. Or you can actually even use purple pan weed as well as the sunscreen. It's like a certain little weed that you also get but in the, next to the pan, hence the name purple pan weed. Or sometimes you'll find it in the river beds. Same thing. You can also add a little bit of water to it to the roots and make a little bit of a, mo uh, a paste from it. And then you can actually also use it for your skin. Also very nice. Very, very nice. Good for your skin. But you don't get the purple pan weed too often compared to the devil's thorn. Level Sawn you'll find way more in this area. All right, so I'm going to go to some of the wallows here. I just want to quickly pop my nose in there, some of the wallows here on this one road. Just to see, because we haven't had hyena action for a long time. Did you hear them this morning, Thunder? Oh, I didn't hear anything this morning. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was very, very quiet with hyena action over the last couple of days. So we're just gonna, just gonna take a look around this area quickly. Sometimes I enjoy using these pans on hot days just to go and lie in uh, in those little pans and that just to keep cool. We're gonna take a look. I 
Hmm? Lapel. Lapel. Yeah. I don't know. It looks like my audio. Not too great. There we go. Better, better. This is On Safari. Now remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you. To be having these incredible experiences in this wild underwater forest. It, it was just one of those things which I don't think I'll ever see again in my life. Thanks for joining us on our Sunrise Safari. So we're sitting here with a little adult Wahlberg's eagle. It's so pretty cool to see these big birds of prey. So they often occur in woodlands and savannas. And they do have quite a varied diet. So obviously I think a dwarf mongoose might be a nice meal for a Wahlberg's eagle. But they will actually also feed on invertebrates and insects if they are desperate for food and can't find too much else. A small lizard also might make a nice meal. That crest of theirs on the top of their head is definitely helps with identification. It's like a chocolate brown colour here, Cam. Normally, mostly an intra-African migrant, this Wahlberg's eagle. So they do breed in the south in August to March, generally. Well, let's go and see what's happening close to Gauri. We've got any activity around there. We've got a Cape Starling up in the tree just close to us. So, yeah, let's head over to Gauri Dam and see what's happening at Gauri Dam. It's cooling off a bit. The sun is definitely a bit more forgiving. Let's say it's been a warm day. 
Uh, I think this golden hour this afternoon is going to be quite beautiful. Cam and I were just talking about how the light has been really nice on this road. It's beautiful light for anything really to come walking around. It's kind of when the light softens a little bit and kind of everything makes everything look better when that light is shining bright and kind of right above you in midday. It's yeah, not always the most flattering light, I must say. All the grass is kind of illuminating on our left here. See what is happening at Gauri Dam. Rosemary, you're most welcome for all the survival tips. Always good things to know. Uh, we were actually talking about this morning, we had a, a wild jasmine. We are talking about wild jasmine this morning and we had one of our viewers that asked if you can make tea out of wild jasmine. So I did do a little bit of homework and yes, apparently you can make tea out of wild jasmine. The flowers, you pick the flowers and the leaves and put them into a pot with some hot water and then uh, obviously boiled it up or make sure the water is hot. But it does take 24 hours for it to brew but I'm not too sure if the, I mean, like I mentioned, there are over 200 species of wild jasmine and the species that I've found that you can make tea out of is they don't occur in this region. So I'm just trying to find out if the wild jasmine that we get here, if that is, if you are able to make tea with it, because I'd definitely love to taste the taste a wild jasmine tea. But apparently it does need 24 hours because it takes quite a while for the aroma to actually come out into the water. And uh, yeah, it's got quite a few great benefits while jasmine. But, uh, if you make the tea, it can be a good antioxidant apparently. It's good for um, kind of relaxation and it's a very good calming tea. Oh, we've got a woodland kingfisher. Just on this branch there. Isn't that beautiful? Let's see if we can get a view of this woodland kingfisher. Whoop. Oh, have a look there. Oh, isn't he pretty? Hello. I've been hearing them calling all the time, these woodland kingfishers. Looks like he's just given his beak a bit of a clean. Oh, he might come back. Oh, he's giving himself a bath. Uh, I'd also love to go and dunk in the water, wouldn't you, Cam? Nice to go and have a quick jump into that water, but. So these woodland so terry is asking about their migratory routes. So these woodland kingfishers are intra-African migrants, and uh, they should—they've um, been around. It feels like they've been around for a while, doesn't it, Cam? They've been calling every day for a while, so they should be heading up north. I reckon in the next. Bit. I doubt they'll be here within the next month or so. I'm not exactly sure on when they head up north, but during generally it's during the summer season. So, were you here when they arrived back, Cam? When like should have been November, uh, mid November. Yeah, so they should have arrived. Cam said mid November, December. I think Cam was around here that time and but they only start calling probably like in December and I'm sure by what are we in my right now February I'm sure by the end of March they'll probably head further up north aren't these aren't they beautiful I love that the two-tone color of their bill the black and red and their yeah, iridescent blue coloration I'm sure if you've been watching the show regularly, that's probably a sound that has been filling your homes for the last two months or month and a half. The sound of these woodland kingfishers. It's quite a large kingfisher, the woodland kingfisher. And he's very similar to another kingfisher that is one of my favorite.
Noreen. He definitely is a beautiful bird. So there's another kingfisher that's very similar to the woodland kingfisher and that is the blue-breasted kingfisher and that is I would say definitely my favorite of one of my favorite of the kingfishers. Or, no, I'll go with favorite because he's quite big. In the pygmy and dwarf kingfisher are also very cute, very small, lots of colors, but and the blue-breasted kingfisher has very similar colorations to the woodland kingfisher, but of course he has a beautiful bright shocking blue band on his breast and uh, they're not as common as a woodland kingfisher they obviously only occur in specific regions and they're not as uh, well, they're a bit more shy than the woodland kingfisher I'd say they whoop off he goes we've got uh, on the right hand side of the road there Cam we've got two grey go away birds probably feeding on some seeds over there what are they doing let's have a look Let's have a look. See how the woodland kingfisher is definitely a lot more shy and skittish blue-breasted than the woodland kingfisher. But very beautiful bird. What are they doing? What are they feeding on there? The leaves of an acacia. That's strange. Seen that before? Oh, check it! Check it! Then they're having to like be very careful with where they place themselves, as there's a lot of thorns, obviously, on that acacia bush. That's very interesting. I didn't know go away birds fed on leaves. But they definitely love fruit. These grey go away birds. Uh, let's head over to Cedric and see what he's got. Wow, 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 we've got a rock monitor here on the road. Beautiful monitor lizard and it's busy digging a hole. It was actually, it's almost the entire body was inside of the ground in this hole and it was just the tail that was sticking out. And I'm sure this monitor is maybe trying to dig a hole and bury or maybe lay some eggs. You never know. But look at this, it's going deep in there now. There it goes. Oh, look. This is amazing. And I'm sure it, it's difficult to say, if, but it's a very big one. But it was carrying eggs, it was got the eggs inside of her. But I've got a feeling that's the only reason she's digging like that because even if you're digging it for maybe sand frogs or something else that's lying underneath the ground you're not gonna put so much effort into something small so I've got a feeling that she's busy really digging this hole to lay her eggs no, don't move away don't don't we are staying just quiet here Tom, this is amazing, absolutely amazing. There she goes in again. You can see she's going to dig some more sand out. Here we go. Scooping more sand. Yo, she's got really far inside there. You know, we need to maybe make a little kind of, how can I say, a little section around the spot to make sure that you don't drive over here. You know, maybe for, for Kerry and them just to... Yeah, so I'm going to try and put a pin down on this situation, this spot here, so and of course others when they do come here, they don't drive directly on top of this nest if it is that this female is going to lay eggs inside here. So I'm going to do about 30 to 60 eggs. And she'll put it, lay them in, in the hole, a deep hole, and then she'll cover it up again with the sand compacted and then when the little ones hatch they will dig themselves up to the surface wow this is amazing and look at that beautiful thick muscular tail I'm 
Dogmane Lover, she is gorgeous. Yes, no, she's beautiful, isn't it? It's a nice big size. And uh, I think she's just taking a little bit of time out there unless she's trying to claw more sand out from underneath there. But it's difficult to tell exactly what she's doing now. Oh, no, she's coming out. She's coming out. No, I think she's just bringing more sand to the surface. Beautiful patterns on the face. The black and the yellow stripes at the bottom jaw. All those little spots around there is all beautiful pattern. Even the mouth open. It is like a crocodile as well. So when a crocodile and a crocodile as well, same thing. When a croc is getting too hot, they will actually open their mouths to try and cool cool down a little bit to regulate temperature. Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior selected from amazing amateur and professional footage to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act. It's just a tail that's remaining on the outside now. The rest of her body's in, I think at least, I say this one is about a meter. It's about 1.2 meters. Eh? No, one point, I say about 1.2, yeah. So I think it's already about, I say, 700 centimeters that's already inside of that hole. So it's almost uh, just under a meter that's gone in that hole now. That's deep. That is deep. And it's just going further and further and further and very quickly. Yeah, it's going so quick. A canine girl, the, the monitor doesn't know this is a road. So the monitor lizard is completely oblivious on this being a road. I mean, they don't have that saying, okay, well, this is a road, the cars are using. No, 
this is just another spot for for this monitor lizard so completely oblivious that's why i'm saying i just want to put a little pin drop here at least then now there's no and this little spot yeah you just have to be very very wary but luckily it's in the center it's not on the road itself luckily it's on the like the middle man where the vehicles don't really drive on the middle man they usually got the tires on, on both sides there so that's at least uh, not a bad position for this monitor lizard Tigs, yeah, now this is very special. I'm especially my last time I had tigs, I fully agree. They're very special. I'm really, really enjoying this quite a bit. Didn't think I was going to see something like this this afternoon. It just shows you always have to be ready for that surprise around every single corner. And luckily, right at the last like, second, I saw saw this monitor lizard in the corner of my eye. Because it was like this down the road. So you don't you think it's a piece of wood that's lying on the road and just carry on driving. But then something just caught my eye. And it's like it's not a wood, a piece of wood. It's a, it's a lizard. Or monitor. It's now stopped and reversed. Might be, it might not be rosettes, but that is fine. As I say, everything is unique around here and amazing and different and just so so special. Just to see all different kinds of animals doing their own thing and different things. It doesn't get monotonous at all, and this is exactly why safaris are so fantastic. You just don't know what you're going to bump into next. But look at that muscular tail for defense. If anything comes in, that lizard, monitor lizard will quickly come out, and then, of course, he'll use that tail as a whip. So it feels like maybe if it's a other predators are close by or coming to attack it, then it'll use that tail, the muscular tail as a whip to try and fend itself off from that predator. moving. Look at the tail. See the tail. It's coming straight to the vehicle. The tails also you can see the tails kind of a funny position. Hmm well I'm just gonna sit here because if I start the vehicle I'm gonna startle this. All right, it's going to go under the vehicle, um, Gwen. So we'll have to maybe yeah, I might stay in sight. Why just maybe? That's very strange, yeah? No, we haven't done much, we haven't really moved the vehicle, and plus it moved straight towards the vehicle, so it didn't have an issue with us yet being here. All right, well, that's gone, Gwen, and I'm not going to move anywhere. All right, let's head over to Kerry while we try and get out of the situation, yeah. Well done, Cedric, for your awesome sighting. That we have seen that 
rock monitor I think I saw it the other day with Cam but of course he didn't want to hang around for us so he was definitely on a mission took off rather quickly I must say anyway we're sitting here enjoying this golden light that's coming through the grass I thought this would be a perfect time to have a bit of a quiet moment <sighs> Take a lot of deep breaths in and out, reflect on your day, we'll listen to the beautiful sounds of nature, the birds calling around us, and just really have a bit of a moment of gratitude for this special day that we've managed to have. hope that you've all had a really lovely day. Um, it's been a nice warm day here but it's definitely been worth it to have this golden hour upon us now. Of course all the birds went semi-quiet but there's a lot of crickets calling. I'm not sure if you can hear the crickets. They're quiet. Yes, Catherine, this grass in that golden light is just magic. You can see how it's kind of moving a little bit. So there is, it was rather still earlier midday. There was not a single bit of a breeze or no sign of any fresh air. But now as the day starts to kind of cool down and kind of wind up, you can see a little bit of air movement there, which is really lovely to just kind of feel a bit of a breeze on your face. All I'm smelling right now is fresh <laughs> elephant dung. <laughs> Cause, yeah. can you, you can smell it, Cam. Whoa. Yeah, no, uh, drove over next to some fresh elephant dung just now. But it's all the wonderful smells and sounds of the bush. There's actually a crested barbet calling just behind us. I'm not sure if you can hear it. Some Natal Spurfowl also calling in the distance there. Down, probably down in the river line. Isn't this beautiful, lovely way to end off a day? Take a nice deep breath in and out. Enjoy that grass that's moving there. What other birds are calling? So, Fancy playing safari snaps? Or showing off your photo skills in fun competitions? How about sneak peeks of our brand new camera spots? 
and live chats with fellow Africam fans. Well, Africam All Access has got your back. Just head to Africam's YouTube channel, hit the join button and select Africam All Access. You'll unlock Africam premium website perks and all the VIP benefits of our YouTube memberships. that the Anthropocene is surely a blink of evolutionary time. They may no longer dominate, but reptiles and amphibians remain a crucial and fascinating cog in the Earth's biological systems. Wasn't that grass just beautiful with the golden hour light behind it? Very like camps, it's very cinematic, very I put it into slow-mo and you have the grass kind of yeah just slowly moving in the breeze very special the light has been beautiful this afternoon I think we're gonna have some really pretty light today also had a beautiful sky the other day at, uh, was at uh, twin dams it really beautiful pre-sunset sunset yesterday was also quite pretty as well it's kind of like again like nice peach orange color underneath the clouds it's cooling off nicely I can smell everything's kind of cooling down nice fresh air Nice to have a bit of fresh air to cool everything down, a bit of a, a bit of a breeze. I think we are just gonna probably turn around here. There were a few little spots that looked really beautiful to get maybe a bit of a sunset with uh, some skeleton trees. I think we'll just turn around here. Ooh. Smell the uh, aniseed plants as we kind of go through the bush here. Whoop. Got a really cool sighting of that rock monitor with Cedric. Super cool. Don't see that every day, eh? Wow. Super cool. Yeah, super cool sighting. You can see water monitors quite often in quite a lot of areas, but to see the rock monitors is definitely not something you see often. And a few times I have seen rock monitors, they've been pretty big, I must say. 
I also use a hole in a big tree to kind of um, hide themselves in some dry arid areas. They're not very dependent on water so yeah they can stay in areas that are far away from the from any water source. Their snout kind of has a bit of a different shape to the water monitor too. I find it's more box shape than kind of pointy. So a really pretty tree just through here on the right also a bit of a skeleton tree. Not sure what's been happening the last couple of days but once the sun has been going down so the sky has been beautiful obviously before the sun disappears but then once the sun disappears and we haven't had much of a sunset after so I thought we'll just find a nice bit of a gap and check out that sky we've got some beautiful clouds behind us and baby blue sky as well see this tree is quite cool here Cam I'm gonna try to position us how's how's that Cam also Quite an interesting tree as well. It looks like half of the tree is not doing so well. Half of the tree it looks like there's a wild orchid growing in that tree. That's pretty cool. Some old dead yellow flowers. Oh wow, isn't that just magical? Check it that it's like the sky is actually on fire. And that is an old knob thorn tree there you can see it's definitely got a lot of character to it interesting branches still a few knobs at the top of the tree Sam this is definitely very pretty so just want to take a bit of time to appreciate the sun sunset here because I'm not sure once the sun has been hitting the horizon the last few days hey it's been weird eh Cam yeah like, but it's also because we haven't had clouds Yeah, Cam okay, saying something to do with the clouds, nothing to reflect of. Uh, but also we had a bit of a build up and a storm the other oh, night. Yeah. So I think all those clouds kind of building up was kind of eating the sunset before the sun even went down. We even had the one night, remember that night the storm was coming where literally we had one side of the sky. So in the kind of in the west, north northwest it was beautiful sky and beautiful sunset but from the southeast wow there were clouds uh, that were looming and it just slowly started to take over the sky and just almost like gobbled up the sunset and within 30 minutes the whole sky was just a bit dark so just want to enjoy the sunset here reflect on the day that we've had forget about all your worries and anything that might be stressing you and just enjoy this beautiful setting that we have here isn't that magic Oh, got a little bit of clouds off to the right there. It's quite nice to see the little clouds. The other side of the sky is also kind of baby blue. <sighs> wow, how lucky are we, Cam? It is a great time to be alive, isn't it? <laughs> so they say, there's an old wives' tale that they say once the sun hits the horizon if you count slowly to 10 then the sun will be gone but I have tried this theory and I don't know how slowly that person was counting to 10 that came up with that old wives tale but uh, I think it's more like 20 on some days but yeah once the sun does hit the horizon it definitely does disappear quickly I'm not sure if we have any photography fans out there I love doing time lapses do you like time lapses Cam? Yeah. Thank you, Anneli. Yeah, I really am enjoying these Juma sunsets and the sunrises. We've had some very special sunrises too. 
Do you enjoy time lapses, mm -hmm. Cam? I do, yeah. Oh, I love doing time lapses. And slow mos. I've also recently got into slow mos too. A lot of kind of videos can just, yeah, I don't know, it just kind of makes them a lot more dramatic when you slow everything down. Right, well, we're almost gone here, so let's head over to Cedric um, and see what he's looking at at the dam there. Thank you, Kerry, and we're still sitting here at Treehouse Dam watching this beautiful sunset. It is so stunning, and I was just reflecting on my six weeks uh, here at uh, Wild Earth and um, the amazing sightings that uh, I really encountered over the six weeks. It's just been phenomenal, phenomenal as always. I don't think I've ever left after a stint saying, uh, it wasn't too bad. It's always been just so, so amazing. So, yeah, it's been one of those stints again. But yeah, just coming back to, uh, I just want to say, while we got a little bit of light for the last bit, I'm actually very fascinated in this uh, heron. So if we come take a look a little bit close on that heron, you'll see with the black-headed heron with the juvenile, you'll see where the black runs below the eye line. You'll see very carefully. You can see where the eye is. You can see where the black line runs. It's below the eye line. And now if it was a gray heron, the gray heron's got the black above the eye. And it'll run a little bit to the back, but then as well as it'll go further down on the chest area where the black-headed heron uh, juvenile you can see the blackness on the back end of the neck very interesting as well with uh, hunting so hunting um, as I was saying they'll hunt mice rats large insects like locusts grasshoppers uh, even snakes birds they'll go for all those kind of things quite a variety of things so uh, they do not go for anything like fish and uh, and frogs in the water not like other uh, herons where they'll find them in the water waiting per patiently for something with the black-headed heron They'll move in the fields in the grasslands looking for the other kind of prey species amazing I, As I said, I haven't seen a black-headed heron. Yeah, this is the first black-headed heron I've seen this side and once again, I want to say thank you to Pucky for the heads up on this this morning I really thought it was a gray heron and then she pointed it out exactly one or two differences on it and uh, yeah well what a find what a find the so birding as well has been just amazing over the last six weeks and to end it end my cycle off with uh, with this is just perfecto perfecto mmm Jill Jill they look very alike very alike that's what I thought this morning was a grey heron but it just shows you you've got to kind of Sometimes we always say in guiding terms, you can, you can you know, look, but see what you're looking at. Don't just look, but you must see what you're looking at. So you can, oh, I can look at that tree. Oh, it's a beautiful tree. But see what's happening inside of that tree. So see what you're looking at. Very important. And I doubt this, and this, this heron will be here tomorrow. I think it's just passing by. It's not really its a kind of habitat. Oh, Steve, thanks so much. Yes, I am going to enjoy it thoroughly. Thoroughly, I'm going to kick my feet up and I'm just going to just take it easy. <laughs> uh, this, this leave, I'm not going to do too much. So not many plans ahead. I think I might just uh, be staying for a few extra days around here at camp just uh, kind of cooling down and still enjoying nature so but other than that yeah i'm looking forward to leave and i was thinking today as well i was thinking oh i actually mentioned actually mentioned uh, the other day i was mentioning um, my, Nene was actually my, my, you know, I can say my top sighting for my, for my leave. And then I realized, uh, hold on, um, you know, actually, 
Actually, uh, you know, the elephant sightings that we've had has, have been pretty amazing as well. I've had some amazing sightings. So, hmm, is it? Hmm, well, look at a beautiful sunset. Yes, if you want to join myself on a safari in November, please, please, uh, if you want to jump on board with me, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, in the northern Sabi Sands at the Chitwa Chitwa. I can't wait for that. And, uh, well, if you want to jump on board, please go onto our website. It's wildearth.tv and just go onto the travel uh, link and you'll get the whole itinerary on what's going to be happening and I am so looking forward to it. I think uh, especially here in the northern Sabi Sands at Chitwa Chitwa there's so many characters that we can see and uh, great places that we can traverse on so yes please go and take a look at that and uh, yes book 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 for November can't wait that's for the end of November and it's a nice time, nice time of the year as well. Beautiful time of the year. I love that time because it's just before the big rains and it's right at the start of summer as well. Welcome to Destination Safari Wild Earth Travel Show that showcases luxury safari destinations. We explore the intimate thatched safari lodge located here in a valley lined by indigenous vegetation in the northern section of Amakala Game Reserve. We've got some elephants down here. Should we go for... We... Okay, we've got some up on the ridge over there. We'll try to see if we can catch up with them. Otherwise, there was one bull left behind here, but I think he's going to be going off into the thicket. So it's going to be difficult for us to see him they might head up to quarantine maybe if we don't catch them there we can catch them in the other open area it's on the hill there elephants elephants let's see where these elephants are going
look at. Let's see, we've got the bull. Oh, he's still grazing there on the side of the um, so we'll see if we can get closer to that elephant bull. It's just in there. Found this elephant bull. So let's see if we can still manage to see him there. Hmm. He's got his bottom sticking out. Maybe we'll get him. <laughs> he is not. Let's. Maybe he's gonna come out. Let's give him. Let's give him a bit of time. See if he ends up coming out there. So it looked like a female with two juvenile sub-adults, but kind of was heading further up west to this open area. Savannah grassland. Let's see if our elephant bull, <laughs> he seems to be by himself. Let's see if he's gonna come out for us. He's feeding on some vegetation there. You can just see a bit of movement. Please come out for us. I can't, still can't get over the size of that elephant bull we saw today, hey Cam. He was huge. I think he's easily the biggest elephant bull I've seen on Juma so far. Might have even been the biggest elephant bull I've seen in Kruger actually. He was huge. He was in must. You could see he was dripping from his penal sheath before we even smelt him. And then you could see obviously he had a lot of liquid coming from his, his temporal gland as well. and. Uh, yeah, then we smelt him and we smelt him, what, five minutes after we passed him? So he was kind of on the road. We got a bit of a surprise visit from two elephant bulls today on the road. They were coming from mud wallows. But this one definitely moved off the road and we kind of slowly went past him. And of course he was in must, so we were very cautious of him. Um, and yeah, it was kind of a bit indecisive. He wrapped his trunk around his his face and was a bit unsure of us so we decided to just leave him be um, and then five minutes after we left this bull we could still smell this very pungent smell of elephant bull in must you said it was the strongest uh, musk bull you've smelt hey cam Whoa, that was strong oh check this guy is actually sand bathing himself there See, uh, he just picked up some sand and chucked it behind his ears. She may be still hot and sweaty from the day. So Yvonne, um, bachelor herds are formed. So basically when the young bulls are uh, now becoming sexually... Sorry. When the young bulls are starting to become sexually mature the young elephant bulls and they'll kind of be kicked out of the herd by the the rest of the the group will kick them out and then uh yeah they kind of have to form their own they'll either be by themselves or shame these young bulls will sometimes join into a bit of a like a group of other males and they'll all hang out together um they're not always frequently always in that group so they might be in that group of other bulls anything from two to about four or five bulls all together and i think we had a good example the other day on the damn cam oh no actually with cedric where the two bulls were kind of play fighting and again it's good to be in numbers and while these bulls are maturing then they'll kind of eventually start to go off on their own as they get bigger and kind of in search for females so yeah it's kind of like a bit of a nomadic group of uh, these elephant bulls that will join together and kind of yeah relocate themselves go and look for females when the females come into estrus then these bulls will actually try and follow up on the females that are in estrus we've actually got some elephants behind us cam those elephants are still there i'm gonna reverse for us just see them. 
Oops, sorry guys. We've got a herd of impala in front of us with uh, one of our own wildebeest. Could be George. How's that, Cam? It's our little breeding herd. It's just off on the left here. See our elephant bulls will come into must then once a year. When they come into must, they'll also be very much alert and aware of the females that are in the area. And if any female elephants are in season or in estrus, then they will be attracted by attracted to these females. And it's quite interesting. It's like a bit of a mate selection process goes on. All these younger bulls will obviously come around, and the female will always wait for the biggest and strongest male, strongest bull with the best genes. Um, to mate with, so all these younger bulls will come around and try and uh, try and try their luck with this female. But she's generally more uh, focused on waiting for the bigger and stronger bulls that have the most um, probably have the best genes. But in some areas, what's happened is um, oh, I can hear the hippo. Whoop. I don't know if you heard the hippo and the hardy dars calling there. So in some areas where maybe there's a shortage of bulls, where females are maybe a bit concerned of, yeah, if they're worried that they might not be able to reproduce, um, there's something wrong with the bulls, or if there's no bulls coming around. They will actually allow the younger bulls to mate with them, but of course this doesn't really bode well for um, their gene pool because obviously they're always looking for the best possible genes to mate with. Shame, I've seen it with giraffe, so the giraffe will kind of have the same thing as well. The female go into estrus and I don't know if any of you have watched giraffe when the males are coming to test if the females in season the female actually if you see on the right hand side there um, they're coming through there so when the female's urinating the male giraffe will actually go behind her and it's quite disgusting but she he'll actually drink her urine to test to see if she's again ready for reproduction and uh, Shame. Sometimes you get all these younger giraffe that maybe are too small. Ah, okay. Yeah. I think let's reposition a bit. Want to do the impala here? So. Ah, it's really cooling down nicely. I've got a herd of impala close to us on the right here. This one wildebeest male, the blue wildebeest. Oh, they're all having their last bit of... I love it just before it gets dark. Monica, yes, there is definitely a lot happening around Gowrie Dam. It is a very busy place. I think because it's so open, it's got like... It's got quite a lot of diversity around it, like habitat diversity. Um, we've got a bit of a river line on the one side of the dam wall. Um, just nice leopard territory. We've got a nice open grassland on the other side where we are here, kind of on the western side of the dam, which uh, can attract a lot of antelope and elephants and a lot of other kind of species. And then you have a bit of a drainage line on the other side that's also great with lots of kind of reed and soft material. Also a lot of different kind of like elephants would love to feed on that kind of soft vegetation down there and it seems to have quite nice open shoreline too spotted <laughs> thick me calling this wildebeest just gave a bit of a jump which frightened everyone so yeah you can see it's it's quite open it's yeah definitely got a nice diverse habitat which would attract a lot of a lot of species. The other dams are all quite thick around them. So what have we got there? 
I mean, I did see at a treehouse dam, um, there's some elephants that we made a mud wallow just on the side there. So um, I know the elephants also like to have a pool party at twin dams there. Uh, sorry, at treehouse dam. Um, but if they don't want to get wet and they just want to get muddy, they've actually made themselves a little elephant spa on the side which is literally just a mud wallow. There's not much water there, but enough water to make a bit of mud for them. I've seen elephants having a pool party here at Gauri as well. Have you seen elephants having pool parties at all of the dams yet, Cam? Okay, I'm just gonna try and reposition a bit, see if we can get a better view of the dam wall. Just gonna reverse in here. Our hippos are still Wild Earth Travel in association with Wandering Through is offering some exclusive privately guided safaris in 2024. James is taking a trip into the famed woodlands of the mysterious White Lion. Gala Private Game Reserve in July. Steve and Cedric will lead a safari to Chitwa Chitwa in November. To book, email travel at wildearth.tv or go to the website for more information. We are looking forward to seeing you on safari. See the big males trying to stretch and get to the nice uh, branches of the marula tree. He's trying his utmost best, but maybe he'll give the tree a bit of a shake to see if he can get some of those marulas tumbling down. <laughs> that little one is just like enjoying the time here. No, don't go behind. I can't see you now. Oh, this big male is very, very relaxed. You can see the mom's like, nope, let's go. Let's get away from him, little one. Let's move on to the other side of the tree. Now you can just see how much bigger a male is compared to a female. A male on the left, female on the right. It's a huge difference, eh? And then you look at the small one. Nice comparison. Moving, so come, let's go. Let's move on. 
<laughs> He's a kid. <laughs> There's following mom. I don't know where the rest of the herd is. This just looks like mom and uh, this little calf at the moment here in the clearing. Maybe I think they are slowly heading to another marula tree. There you go. Oh, so adorable. They are so beautiful. I think. That's one thing I can say, my stint over the last, especially over the last three, say three weeks, four weeks, has been fantastic with elephants. Elephants, elephants have been amazing. Oh, Belinda, thank you so much. Yes, I am going to miss uh, nature as always. I'm going to miss uh, Juma big time, big time. And uh, yeah, it's been, as I was talking about the elephants now, I've, I've had such fantastic sightings all around. Um, I think elephant sightings have been remarkable with all the big marula trees here yeah, that's been fruiting and all the elephants have been drawn to the marulas yeah I know it's been quite quite a stunt I want to see how this male oh, he's got five legs hmm You can see this big mouth there is trying to pick up as many marulas as possible. But yes, it was been fantastic. So I really enjoyed. Uh, oh, Laura Moore, thank you so much. <laughs> yes, two weeks' time, I will be back. So two weeks' time. But yes, thanks so much for helping out as well with all identifications of certain animals there's a lot of you that really kind of keep in touch with me with uh, the help on hiding of stuff and uh, if it's characters if it's insects if it's plants birds like today i uh, really do appreciate it and that's why we always say it's not just the wild earth crew it's the wild earth family and it's not just the crew itself it's all you viewers at home or wherever you're watching from we are one family and we all help each other with um, you know with getting and gaining more knowledge on these amazing animals that we do have around here yeah. but uh, yeah it has been fantastic what an afternoon unfortunately no rosettes this afternoon but it's all right it's just one of those things you know next time better luck i'm sure james will be on drive or james will be on drive tomorrow morning i'm sure and Sumi is going to find uh, James somewhere. I laugh that happens tomorrow morning. Watch, James goes out and then Sumi comes to James and boom. <laughs> Never know. But yeah, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. And thank you so much for all the comments and questions that everybody sent through to us. And uh, yes, we will see you tomorrow morning. Well, I won't see you tomorrow morning, but uh, the rest of the crew will be up and early. For the sunrise safari but once again thank you so much everybody and have a wonderful evening from the wild earth crew good night mm -hmm.